This is Ryan with Frontline Animal Removal, and I want to show you the perfect example of a flying school entry point. Right there, let me illuminate it. You should be able to see it. Let me zoom in on it. Okay, we're zoomed in. What makes this entry point perfect? It's between the sides of a golf ball and a, and a ping pong ball. These shingles are brand new. I mean, they are brand new. And they've chewed a nice circular opening. And when we look at the white trim, we have all the typical grease markings. And when we look at the wood, we have all the typical rubbing signs. So if I was teaching a class on what to look for when it comes to flying squirrel entry point, I would show them this. Now, flyers can get into a hole about the same diameter as a quarter. Um, they are, one of the challenges with them is because they are small, they typically will have multiple entry points into the structure. So we deal with them a little bit differently than your normal squirrel. Your typical squirrel, we're focused on one entry point. So your grays, reds, and foxes usually just have one entry point. Sometimes they have more, but usually it's one. We trap that area, fix that area, we're done. Flyers are different. They have multiple entry points. This building, well, I found four entry points so far, and I can just do a quick assessment. So we're going to seal up the entire place. We will probably trap this hole because it is their main door. I don't know how many squirrels we'll catch. Sometimes it's one, sometimes it's 20, or anywhere in between. <clears throat> The other difference with flyers is they're, well, they're nocturnal. So grays, when I show up and do the job, or reds or fox squirrels, we set up multiple traps because we know some squirrels might be in the house and some squirrels might be out of the house. Flyers, well, they're usually sleeping when I'm setting up my cages. And I usually only catch them one night on that first night as they all leave the house to go forage for food. Because right now, they're all sapped out of sleep, having nice dreams, dreaming of eggcorns and walnuts. And uh, uh, it's usually a quick hit on those guys when it comes to checking traps. But the big deal with flyers is repair work. So with your grays, fox, and reds, it's usually uh, a significant expense on the trapping part and a small expense on the repair. With flyers, it's the other way around. The repair work is much more expensive than the trapping part. In the end, it all kind of balances out anyways. Um, the flyers are different, but this is a perfect example of a fly squirrel entry point. It's pouring rain. We have a fly squirrel there. And I don't know if you can tell, but we got one, at least one in that trap. The other day I showed you the hole up there that I called the most perfect, or almost the most perfect, flying squirrel hole, and we caught something. All right, so if you suspect flying squirrels, lots of noise at night, you know, look around on the outside of your home, be careful, and see if you can find a ping pong to golf ball sized hole that is nice and circular, and you may have found your trouble.